morning. Today is March 1st, 2018. This is the Crushing Iron Triathlon Podcast. It's that time again, buddy. It's that time again, man. How are you? I'm good. I am You're Mike Tirali. We are talking with Coach Robbie Bruce. This is the Crushing Iron Podcast. It's a big day. You know, Zig yeah, Ziglar told us never to judge a day by the weather, but oh, it is Jesus, gloomy man. again, man. Again, back-to-back days. But hey, that's that's how it is this time of year. We get we get a few golden days, like we did, uh, like what Monday, Tuesday, and then uh, we get shit on for two days, and then we're back to sunshine again uh, the rest of the week. So, uh, you know, it's uh, just how life is, man. That's uh, you know, weather and life are pretty much the same. They're unpredictable. You can try to uh, forecast it with a great accuracy, only to become incredibly wrong. Uh, some days are great, some days are bad, but, you know, you do the best you can, you dress for the uh, occasion, and you uh, get on with your life. Yep, you got to do it, you got to dive in. And uh, if this has already inspired you (laughs) (laughs) to to seize your day, um, you know, help us out and help the triathlon community out by uh, maybe dropping by iTunes and uh, leaving us a positive review, maybe a five-star rating. Help people find the podcast because um, we are going to uplift the community today. Whoa, you must have some major stuff in the back pocket I don't know about. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> uh, uh, you have like a surprise guest on or something? Cause, um, I'm just trying you know. to, you know, okay. keep it real, man. Yeah, that's a, and, we, uh, we occasionally can be uplifting, but yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, we also do coaching, and you can find out all about that at crushingiron.com, along with our triathlon and swim camps. We have videos for all of that stuff. We have pricing. It's all just out there, not holding anything back, where you can write your own story. That's it, man. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. That's uh, I knew you were going to go there with, uh, yeah, it's always interesting to see, uh, yeah. It's always interesting to see, yeah, other podcasts and other blogs that are almost exactly word for word like the one you just did. But hey, <laughs> but hey, you know what they say? That flattery is comp. What? Yeah. Imit- something like imitation, imitation is, is the, the greatest. Form of- yeah, the highest form of flattery and the uh, you know quickest way to half-assing it and doing it your own self. But yeah, something something along <clears throat> along those lines. Um, kind of funny. Uh, I I find it ironic. I, I do find it <laughs> ironic as well. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll move on from that uh, interesting uh, side topic. And hey, I have uh, one more interesting side uh, topic. All right, man. You're the one uh, color commentating. So I am the color commentator. Robbie it. is the coach. You just go with it, man. Um, you know, when I was in New York, we were kind of driving around a lot, and we had a conversation pop up, and I was very interested because as an aging. Uh, Aging man who's losing touch with the uh, in terms and the cool cool factor at times. Um, how do you define something these days that is cool? You know, is it, uh, what do you call it, dope? <laughs> like, you, you know. You think I call it dope? Well, I listen, don't know. Man. I mean, I, know, I, I don't I, think listen, you man. do. I like may, if you've got like a new, I uh, may be twenty new, uh, years younger kit. than you. What do you say? I may it's be, tw- I may be twenty years younger than you, but uh, when it comes to how I live my life, I'm probably ten years older than you. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, so you're asking the wrong guy. You say that's um, precious. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I think the cool kids say like, you know, um, yeah, maybe, maybe they say that kid is that kid is dope. I don't mean, I'm, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> 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 fat, I have no idea. fat is out, right? That's long they gone. Fat? Like PH? <laughs> yes. Nobody says fat anymore. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, listen, the, listen, the world we live in now, if you called something fat, even with a PH, you'd be, you'd be like uh, assassinated on social media for body shaming. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's true. You can't, you can't go anywhere around that area. Maybe, maybe it's woke. Woke? Oh, boy. Woke, I know that's uh, that is woke. Like, what the hell does that mean? Hey, man, I just got... Check out this new power meter. That is fresh. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I there, heard there, that, there are some things out there. There, are, there are some things out there that, you know, with triathletes and I think every in, like, endurance athlete, too, they, they always have, like, 
there's a there's a, always a couple like you know quality not not even quality you know sayings that everybody you know pull the trigger is one yep when pulled the trigger on signing up for uh, so and so that's mm, one yeah mm-hmm. uh, I think uh, you know with cool with cool stuff or you know I got a new whip. And they call their bike a new whip. Like, who the hell decided to call your bike a whip? Oh, uh, I think that's old school. I don't know. Before, um, but yeah, I, I don't. I don't really know what the cool. Kid, I will have to have a guest on because neither neither you or I know what uh, is woke. The although, <laughs> although if you're listening, Sarah Frank um, is one of our athlete, <laughs> one of our athletes who uh, stays just incredibly dedicated to staying as far behind in our podcast as possible. Uh, she's probably <laughs> she's, she's a, our been an athlete for a year. She's been to camp. She's probably still only on podcast number thirty two. Uh, so she's about a hundred behind. But the other day we were texting back and forth, and she uh, she, she actually used the phrase uh, "gotta stay woke." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I got a huge kick out of that. But uh, so Sarah, if you're listening. Uh, even though it's 2020, we may not still work together. I love you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> woke. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with awesome. Yeah, I uh, think awesome too. Uh, my, I remember so when was, awesome came out. It was when I was a kid, actually. Was there a point you had going with this in the car, riding in the car, and talking about slang, or you just that was it? That was it. Well, I mean, we were doing an art documentary, street art documentary, so there was a lot of you know, uh, a lot of um terminology going out um like you know when you see a new painting a lot of a lot of those guys say that's dope but i think even dope is out i don't know man so awesome yeah. it is my yeah, dad dude, used to wait, say awesome well, people don't even yeah well, well i promise we'll talk about a triathlon in a second but people well, don't even like the triathlon man oh, i love that new kit real words anymore they just use like you know uh shorthand like lol or which god i can't stand that um really? i like it kind of makes you do, me, I can't, it makes I, me kind I, of smile how many times do you ever lol like how many times <laughs> do you really truly laugh out loud like i call bullshit on everybody who does lol like are you really laughing out loud no you're sitting in your cubicle at work texting back and forth i know you're not laughing out loud inside um, you can't laugh out loud inside <laughs> like you people are like and then my my least favorite of all time and oh, this is how actually Sarah Frank and I got on this topic was we were, she has a daughter I think in high school and she was quizzing me on like shorthand like you know, LOL and, and uh, well I was I was you know schooling her on what F uh, FFS meant because um, that's the only like short term that I use and that's for fuck's sake but um, mm. is YOLO I don't know why but that actually like drives me up the wall. Hashtag YOLO. You only live once. Yeah, pretty sure we're all aware that we are born and then we all die. We only live once. No, it's um, just a reminder. Come well, on, man. Hashtag YOLO is a reminder that we only live once. <laughs> yeah, no, Listen, yeah. if you need a reminder that you're going to die one day and not come and not come back to this earth reincarnated as a cat, then... You know, we're probably not the right podcast for you. That's like YOLO goes with a picture of like an ice cream cone or something, right? <laughs> Is that what they do that for? I don't you know. know. I think I've seen a couple of your athletes do it before. Like, uh, large pizza, YOLO, hashtag Iron Man training, YOLO, you only live once. Large pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just how it's Hashtag gluten free crust, uh, hashtag keto, whatever you is, yeah. But uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, See, try up on hashtags. Thanks. <laughs> now that would be a good cast. That'll be a blog someday um, soon. Yeah, here. let's see. Yeah, we won't go there today, but that could be our own little, um, our own little uh, podcast or blog. But uh, yeah, if, if you stuck around, <laughs> if you stuck around with us uh, this far, we appreciate you listening. And like Mike said before, if you want to hit us up on for an iTunes review and give us your feedback, it's very much appreciated. And thank you again to everybody else who's already taken the time. And then if you have any other questions or want additional information about the entire scope of what we do, you can always visit our website, crushingiron.com. Uh, we've got gear, hats, visors, our camps. We have triathlon and swim camps, swim analysis, run analysis, um, coaching, training plans. And uh, we have, like, I think two uh, – 
life-size posters left still of Mike uh, in a tri suit. Other than that, I think we're pretty much sold <laughs> out. But uh, yeah, you can visit that and check us out. And um, you got anything on the mind but to, to, for our podcast day? You know, you know, um, YOLO. You only live once. I know. Well, you know, I don't. Did we mention it last time or not? But we are. Uh... We are well over 200,000 downloads as a podcast, so I just we wanted are. to throw that out there. Um, we thank everybody for listening, and we've done that with zero real advertising or anything like that, so people have been finding it. And uh, I'm sure at least 50 of those downloads were people who loved it. <laughs> at least. At <laughs> least. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though? I mean, it's like, it's, hey, it's just an honor. It's, it feels really good. You know, we kind of um, uh, do our thing a lot, but... We do, I think, give out pretty good info, man. And I think you've got something on your mind today. I mean, I did you want to talk about uh, anything in particular? I'm still sort of like in my head about what you were saying yesterday about the tra- or two days ago about the trainer yeah. versus outside no, I, cycling. Well, I, I think I think we should I think we should go there in general. I mean, it, it's I mean it's something that obviously you and I chatted about a little bit on Tuesday when I got back from uh, my ride, but then I've been sending out videos this morning to athletes too and a lot of them are kind of um you know like this is a big transition time of year for a lot of athletes uh depending on where you live if you live in a seasonal climate you know like like we do here in nashville where you know right now we're just we're teetering on kind of spring somewhat spring maybe spring you know and so some days are like 60 65 70 some days are back down to rainy and thirty, and so you're going. You've we've all been, for the most part, and other other people in, in different parts of the country who are, who have been stuck inside and stuck inside and stuck inside. Like I got out. Yeah, I got out Tuesday. Uh, had it was sunny. Had an opportunity to get outside and ride. So I switched up. I switched up a day just so I could get out to ride inside. And literally haven't ridden out there. Literally haven't ridden outside since october wow. um yeah so i think uh towards the end of october i went and rode with uh one of ali's friends who is who was in town but so we're looking at you know we'll call it november december january we're looking at basically four full months so basically a third of the year haven't taken my bike off the trainer <laughs> haven't ridden outside and not gonna lie man i was a little nervous Nervous. Um, I don't want to say nervous, but like didn't know you, what to expect. I- exactly. Yeah. Maybe, so maybe not nervous. Uh, not, maybe that's not the right word. But um, you do all this work. You know, most of my runs have been outside, but some runs have been on the treadmill, and most, and then a lot of runs have been outside. But all rides have been on the trainer, and you read a lot of things, you see a lot of things, you get feedback from athletes. There's a million different kind of trainers. There's all these indoor programs. I'm 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 not a a Zwift or Trainer Road guy. I just I I I see the value, but for me, like I can if I've got an hour, an hour and a half on the trainer, I just need to know my intervals and I need some music. Um, that's really all I need, or uh, or like a YouTube video or something like that. I just don't I don't need the the virtual world to kind of get me amped, but. You feel like you're making all these gains, <clears throat> so it's, it's kind of like taking, it's kind of like your your uh, triathlete Frankenstein, like you've you've been you've been in like you know your lab all year all all quote unquote off season or Q4 Q1, and you've been working on your for the bike you've been working on your bike you you feel like you're making all these gains, but the reality is you really just don't know until you actually get to like set yourself free and put yourself out on the road. And so I was like, man, like I feel like from what I know about my experience and what I know about the, uh, you know, not the research, but what's pretty much common knowledge in terms of trainer effort and power versus outside. It's traditionally for most athletes much, much easier to produce power outside than it is indoors for a lot of reasons. Okay. Uh, Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and go into those. Well, for for one, and when I say much easier, I mean it's much much easier for the athlete who has what I would call, or what are kind of you know called these days, quote unquote, dumb trainers. You know, which is what you and I have. And we're talking, 
your normal flywheel, Cyclops, Kirk Kinetic, whatever it is, training where you have a flywheel that you you twist a knob that gives you resistance on your rear wheel. So you also have these, you know, quote unquote smart trainers where you don't even have a rear wheel. You uh, you basically take your rear wheel off and you connect your bike to uh, the trainer. Not it's it's that's much more of a outside ride feel. So power and effort's a little more accurate uh, because you take the rear wheel out of it. But for guys like myself and you who have like these, you know, these flywheel trainers, I used this analogy with you the other day. And when I got done is that, you know, in terms of, in terms of riding on your trainer with that flywheel, if you, if you let up on your pedal stroke at all, or even come to, or even just stop pedaling, your rear wheel will basically stop in less than five or six seconds. Um, come to come to a dead stop. So let's say I'm out there pushing, like you know, I'm going or I'm on the trainer, you know, going hard, pushing, you know, 200, 220 watts, you know, which outside would probably get me like 22 miles an hour or something like maybe 23. If I'm on the trainer and I said and I just stop pedaling, ask you to grab the rear wheel, you could definitely grab it. And stop it probably because you already have the resistance of the flywheel working with you to stop it. It's basically just working on slowing your rear, your rear wheel down. Now, you and I ride in what we call the lab, which is an abandoned air, airport field, uh, uh, airfield. And, um, you know, if we're out there and we come around a corner, we're doing 22, 23 miles an hour, we just stop pedaling. Would you want to grab my rear wheel? No. No. Uh, so it's, and then you have, you have things like the wind, you know, like as much, and like, I, I don't have a huge industrial fan. Like I know that a lot of athletes have setups where they have this, you know, huge industrial fan sitting up, you know, high to their chest. I, I always have a fan on the ground and I usually keep it on like a one. So I'm getting some wind in terms of cooling myself, but I'm not getting anything close to what it's like being outside. You know, and getting a headwind, or just like you know, you're going 20 miles an hour. Guess what you're getting? A 20 mile an hour wind. You know, a breeze. Uh, so that keeps you cool. So that that also keeps you um, in terms of uh, you know uh, effort and you know what they call perceived exertion. It's going to be higher inside. You know, I think some also you know other mental emotional factors come into that in terms of just not going anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, you know, like that's why I always tell athletes like, don't worry about miles per hour on the treadmill. You're not going anywhere, and it's always wrong for the most part. Like unless you have, you know, you're using a bunch of like apps and and smart trainer or whatever that kind of give you some accurate. But all in all, it's it's I think it's still uh, there are a lot of variables to take into fact, uh, take into account, and then thirdly. It's so in terms of rolling terrain, you know, and athletes always say I can push way more power going uphill than I can on a flat, and you have extra friction, you know, with your tire against the road, being able to grip and pull and push. It just, it's just, it's just easier outside. And so I was kind of, like you said, I wasn't nervous, but I was kind of anxious, I guess, to see like, all right. I've been working my butt off this winter and, you know, I want to see what, you know, what's going on, you know, like yeah. what's, what's been happening. Yeah. And I you gotta, hope that it's, yeah. Yeah. You just, yeah and I'm like, God, oh, please, dear God. Like, cause you know, cause what you do on the trainer, if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't translate to outside, then it's worthless. That's like taking a test, man, studying for your butt yeah. off and then going in it there is. and then seeing all the questions are different than what you studied or exactly. something, you know, you hope yeah, it, you, know, you hope it lines up. Exactly. And so like, I, I try not to have any expectations. I try not to have any, you know, just, you know, be just flat out like, you know, cause mainly <laughs> I just wanted to freaking enjoy myself. <laughs> I was getting outside, you know, and and I wanted to like. There's there there really isn't like there is there is nothing like getting on the road for the first time, um, and or getting outdoors for the very first time, and just enjoying yourself and you know kind of unleashing yourself and it's almost like you know it's like unleashing your spirit almost from like being stuck inside. But uh, I went out there and I was cruising along. 
feeling like I was doing a certain effort, and then I looked down and I was like, oh, thank God, this is easier than I thought. Mm. Um, and it was. I was probably, I don't know, 15 watt difference in terms of in terms of just effort. You know of what I was able to do indoors, and I wasn't, you know, like sweating <laughs> profusely and dying on the ground. And I had probably one of my best longer rides of the year, and felt great when I got off. And I think a lot of it is just that like euphoric feeling you get. I had another athlete uh, who was just like, man, like, or she rode outside last week and was like, there's just something about it that just kind of like just totally re-energizes you, and. You know, we're we're you and I are very, very, very fortunate to have a setup like the lab and the airfield. So basically, if, if you're if you're a new listener, if, if you've forgotten, we've we've cut, we've touched on it a few uh, before, but it's basically just an abandoned airfield strip that's 1.25 miles around. You know, almost perfectly paved. Uh, you've got two turns, only one in which you have to even like kind of slow down um, with no cars, no traffic, no lights, uh, just, you know, the occasional skateboarder, rollerblader, um, kite flyer, kite flyer with, you know, some of these, um, you know, dope drones that people have, <laughs> um, that are flying out there. But other than that, like it's, it's, you, it's like basically being on a, tr- being able to execute workouts on a trainer, but being outside. Yeah. It's the and, outdoor and, trainer. Yeah, it's an outdoor trainer, which is awesome. And so uh, I, I loved it. I mean, it was, I finally got to feel like I, you know, I got, it, it was just nice to a, get outside and B, see the results from the hard work I've been putting in and kind of just validating, you know, the work. And then and again, like that's another thing that people, people always lament and, and just kind of downplay and poo poo the, the trainer that it's so boring and that they hate it. Well, yeah, dude, like, if all you're going to do is go slow and easy on the trainer, I hate it. Mm-hmm. Like when I have like once once a week when I have like an easy spin or like an easy ride, it is my least favorite ride. But a lot of athletes, that's all they do is easy spin. So like no wonder you hate it. Mm-hmm. But like think about like it, like it's on the in, like inversely, it's like I hate these long runs, but I love track workouts because you love structure and you love fast, but you know, in long runs, like I just don't want to do it because you have to slow down. Like that's the, you know, from when it comes to a trainer, you should be busting your butt on the trainer. I mean, you should be letting it rip. It should, you should be doing hard intervals. You should be doing, you know, high, high cadence, low cadence, big gear work, threshold stuff. Like you should be, we talked about like really embracing like suffering. You should be suffering or you, well, you know, now it's getting to be a time like yeah you missed you missed the boat um in terms of in terms of suffering but i even have a lot of athletes i encourage them for the majority of the year like <clears throat> if you're set up to do rides on tuesdays thursdays i know you want to go outside but i would i would honestly i would still much rather you be inside and hitting the trainer i mean i know i know it's not fun because you want to see outside but it is almost unless you have a place like the lab or a bike path without a bunch of turns and people, it is nothing. There is nothing like getting on a trainer and just wearing it out. Um, and that's where uh, progress is made. But and going back to kind of what I originally wanted to, headed to with this is that when you when you train by feel and you go by feel, which which so many athletes that we work with do, and that I think is is something that we should really encourage is right now is when you're getting out there and you're getting on the road and you're, you're hitting the trails and you're hitting the bike path and some of your favorite routes and then you come back and you think, oh, I went too fast. Because you, rem- you remember your old outside speed or your outside pace. And the fact is, is I think I said this to an athlete earlier, either today or yesterday, I said, stop worrying about your watch. You've earned this fast. Because you've hit the treadmill, you've hit the bike chain, you've hit the pool all winter long, and the paces outside are going to be wildly different from what you've been doing indoors on a treadmill. Um, they're just so inaccurate, it's not even funny. 
Um, treadmill is always going to be harder and feel harder than outside. Uh, trainer is the same thing. So if you get outside and you think, you know, you you hop on your bike and you try to embody the athlete you were four months ago, then you're going to be holding yourself back. You know, and so just I think it's just important to remember if you're an athlete that's been really consistent and, and you've hit it hard, and you know, and you'll know if uh, if you're somebody I'm talking to right now that really has put in the work and that's busted your butt all off season, quote unquote, to to get better, and you haven't just slacked off and said, "I'll just wait and wait and wait." If you're a person who's just busted it, you know, November, December, January, February, then you're you're about to reap the benefits and going out and just like, you know, like I, I'm, I'm not used to being this fast or I didn't mean to go that fast. It's funny when you read those kind of comments, what do you mean? I didn't mean to go that fast. I didn't feel like I was going that, but I just didn't mean to go that fast. Mm. Well, like, if you're going by feel, I don't care what it says. You know, you've earned that you've been busting your butt all season. So it's it, like I said before, it's, it's really in that we're in that time of year where you're going, you're, you're fluctuating outside to inside and so you really do and we say this all the time you know about shelving expectations this time of year above all else is when you should just be like f expectations one day i'm going to be out one day i'm going to be in they're all going to be different continue to go by feel continue to let it rip and then finally when you kind of get outside that's when because for me i mean I, i'm what was anxious because like i got to figure out you know what's you know what's gonna really work for me for um texas i mean if i didn't like have a chance to get outside quick i got this week then one two three you know four weeks left to get outside and really start to put crunch some numbers so i need some like actual you know reputable um real time real race scenario numbers to crunch to like formulate a plan Mm -hmm. and and, you know versus an athlete who might live in like minnesota who's racing texas yeah no they have no idea they're not gonna have any idea what they may have a ballpark but but not having any kind of actual real world experience and applying their new paces and power or whatever it is outside and in that environment you're just kind of you can ballpark it but you're not going to be getting on the field uh, not to mention, just the idea of, of all that oxygen and that outdoor stuff getting in your, you know, I, that's always an interesting thing for me when when I first start getting outside is like I feel like I'm riding and then all of a sudden my, whether it be allergies or just stuff that gets in your face and I just, you know, you're in your house on a trainer and, the you know, the, the air quality is a little bit weirder and uh, I think that has a little bit of an impact too. So it's kind of nice to get used to, well, that and, you know, just the wind uh, the real wind and dealing with that and bike handling and stuff like that. Cause, uh, you know, you, you ride a trainer for four or five straight months and then you get out there and the bike feels a little bit weird, you know, I suppose. Yeah, yeah it does. But I think I mean, that it, it's just like riding a bike though. You, but yeah, literally yeah. it, it does. But even takes, even I was like, man, I haven't, I haven't been on the road, I haven't been on the road in four months. You know, because yeah. mm-hmm. they can go into the lab. So if I need to fall over, I can fall over here with, you know, nobody's really going to see me. But I mean, that's again, that's like a perfect place to go for, you know, getting back in, in the groove. But it's always windy, you know, and so it is. It's like you're slowly kind of, you know, coming out of, I guess, like triathlon hibernation. <laughs> you know, you've been like inside all year or what seems like forever. And it's like, oh, oh, what what is this outside you speak of? You know, like I'm looking at the the weather again. Like I think I can get outside again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, and for me, it comes like a great time because, like, I mean, I, I can always hit the trainer hard, but having done it so much, like now getting into like, that's why when I hear you know people doing like just these insanely long rides in the winter, I just I feel for them. You know, I can do an hour and a half, two hours, and hit hard, and I can do long. You know, I've done five and a half, five forty five before the trainer makes you want to slit your wrist but um now like getting close to race time it's so good to be like ah but i can just go outside and do it um and it's just that three hours outside is so different than three <laughs> three hours inside plus you know for for those of you that have that are out there that have really really hit the trainer hard if you've got flat races coming up you know it's another huge benefit <clears throat> you know like the the first race i'm doing is is pancake flat 
you know, and I'll be out there for, I don't know how long, probably between two hours and 20 minutes or two and a half hours on the bike. Um, but it'll be nonstop pedaling, you know, no coasting, no, you know, no going real low gear to climb a hill, no descents where I can glide, you know, it's going to be pedaling the entire time, which when it comes to another benefit of the trainer, that's what you get. You pedal the whole time, you know? And so that's a, that's a, one of the other benefits of, of the trainer, obviously, is that if you're preparing for a flat race, you, you don't get those breaks and they might not seem a lot, but go ride a hill you're rolling around and tell me you don't, <clears throat> you don't enjoy and you don't get a good feel from coasting, <laughs> you know, no or, you know, that's, or, or, or being in a group and, you know, hiding in somebody's draft in your group ride. Like you, you know it, you own it, you work it. And then you get out in the flat and you're like, yeah, I can pedal this long as I've done it all. I've done it for the past three months. And there's just, there's, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of good confidence to take away from, from working so hard in in the fall and winter months in terms of the benefit you're going to get once you once you hit the asphalt mm. that's an interesting point uh it, it resonated with me specifically because i have been notorious for not being that um long trainer guy long long rider person in general i do mm-hmm. a lot of the i try to work a lot of hills and i like i you know i go to the lab like we talk about and I'll ride, you know, maybe my long run rides out there might be two and a half hours or something. And I've done these Ironman races and most of the courses I have done have been pretty hilly. And I think that, uh, that maybe is why I can get away with it in weird ways because I am finding a lot of coasting time and recovery time on some of these downhills versus why a flat course like say Florida or something might just eat my lunch in a big way. Because mm-hmm. I, I just don't have that sort of like continuous endurance, and that we're is staying thing. or pedaling constantly, and also being an arrow for the entire time. Right? Yeah, the arrow thing too. It's like, and when you were saying that, I, I just still I'm fascinated by that idea that if you got like a dead spot in your pedal stroke, you, and you're on a trainer, that's almost like you're kind of like continuously like pushing just a little harder to get it going, kind of thing, right? You mm-hmm. Know? I never really think about that, but yeah, the minute you just any kind of pressure lets up on that stroke, your 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 flywheel's grabbing that thing and it's slowing it down. So you're kind of like always going up <coughs> a bit of a, a swell or something like that in a weird way. Mm-hmm. And yep. we kind of talked about how does that translate into like swimming? And you know, I was talking about how I don't do flip turns and really kick off the wall that hard and it is almost like you just got to get it keep getting it started and in some way that seems like it must be a benefit but i don't know i mean because it's definitely you know if you find a groove and you you know in a lake and you just keep kind of going at that pace um that's different than actually having to stop and start you know that's like isn't that one of the biggest things actually like if you're in the water and you stop and look oh, around geez. or whatever. The, like that whole next ten seconds or whatever is a whole different animal. You're sprinting again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's well, it's there's that's, there's a lot to be said for. I mean, that's even something I even thought about. I ran this morning and and looking at the Texas seventy point three course, there are a lot of out and backs. Which okay. you know, if you're you know if you're in a groove. You know, you want like, you know, two, three, four miles with no turns, you know, or when I'm, when I'm talking like out and backs, I'm talking like running around a cone. Right. You know, and, and so even how like hard that can feel. It is <laughs> like you have, you're in this great group and you're like, ah, oh, crap, I got to slow down. And then you got to like corner this and there's usually people there. You got a corner and then you got to just, you know, pick it back up again. So on my some of my longer tempo runs on the weekend or like I did this morning, I'll go hit the greenway and I'll, instead of like doing, you know, two or three miles straight, I'll just do like a mile and then turn around and then go back and do a mile and turn around again, just to kind of get the feel for how much harder it is to do these surges. Um, But again, it's something that you have to practice and it's something that, you know, in terms of running, swimming and cycling, like, you have to be comfortable with throttling neutral throttling neutral steady throttling back to neutral you know you you in a race you don't get to always pick your line 
you, you know, swimming is a is a great example. I mean, there's there's you could do it for all swim, bike, and run, but you have to be comfortable and prepared and have done it to do these like huge surges because even it re- in work I when I say surge I'm not talking like <clears throat> being a fast swimmer. I'm just talking about effort. Like and like you said if you come to a dead stop to sight, oh dear god. Like or if let's say and I've had this happen in the past like you get a goggle leak. Mm-hmm. Like I will sometimes almost swim to where I can't even see <laughs> because the last thing I want to do is stop, scissor kick, undo my goggles and then basically start over. But you get in these, you get whether, you know, no matter what kind of start it's going to be, rolling start, mass start, time trial, whatever, wave start, you're going to have people and you're going to have moments to where you're going to think, okay, I'm either going to get ran over, so I need to pick up the pace, or I need to get around this person and do it quickly to make this buoy. And so you're going to go from swimming steady to surging and then falling back. And you have to get you have to get prepared for that. You have to be, you know, ready for that. And same thing goes for cycling. Like you have hilly courses, you have to train your body to withstand these big surges, whether it's, you know, overtaking somebody, you know, that you have to overtake, you know, let's say you're coming up behind somebody and you're going to be caught and hit for drafting. If you don't pass them in a certain amount of time, so you've got to put this big surge in. If you're not prepared for these surges, then either A, you're going to get popped for four minutes for drafting or B, you're going to be shelled, you know, when you uh, when you get past them, they're probably going to pass you right back. And then same thing with running, you know, in terms of, you know, picking your lines and running up hills and being able to recover. It's all about, you know, building your body into a way that I can absorb the most amount of punishment or effort or surging or whatever that this course is going to dish out. And if you're a person like, and that's, you know, we do a ton of big gear work where in our, in our squad in terms of just strength work, strength work, strength work, because it also creates a much more efficient pedal stroke and you get your body prepared for doing these hills, these surges, these grinded out that when you get to the top, you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm not toast. You know, you got you got courses like Louisville, Wisconsin, Ironman, like Placid, where you're going to have these these hills, and like you don't want to have to you know blow your load or burn your biscuits to the top. You just want to get in a groove and grind it out and 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 low RPM it and and get your way to the top. You know, and so you know you can do it in the pool. You know, there's everybody, not everybody. A lot of people hate swimming fast in the pool because it it's just freaking uncomfortable. I even hate it. I mean, it just it just sucks. Uh, but you got to get used to it. You got to do those things. And like one of our sets we do all the time is like do 40 fifties as 15 yards all out the rest of the 50 easy. And that trains your body to surge and then chill and surge and then chill. And it gets you ready for that pre race feel where you go all out and then you have to steady in, you know, it's just like you have to prepare for all aspects and, and you know you know swimming in the pool is where you do it from starting and stopping over again and um you know i joke with athletes sometimes in in terms of how i will give like rest intervals and sometimes we'll do hard sets and we'll do like down a 15 second rest 10 second rest then you get down to five second rest and it's almost like i would rather not have it because you stop and then you basically hit the wall, and by the time you look up at the clock, it's time to start going again. Mm-hmm. And you have to start all over again versus doing a flip turn or just coming off the wall. And so there's just a lot of things you can do in, in training and in, in that hopefully, if you're listening, that you've been doing over the fall and winter months to prepare you now for you know, what a lot of athletes are getting into now, which is you know race-specific you know, training and the environment and what is going to be required of you. And the dem- and there's just, there's so many different demands in races and the courses and the type of event and the and distance and, and the competition, even depending on what you're going for that, you know, it's, you know, if you're not preparing and you're not doing something that has a purpose, then, you know, it, you can call it what you want, but it's not really training. It's just exercising uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, training has a purpose. Every session should have a purpose. And 
there are a lot of layers to it, and sometimes it can be confusing. But you've, uh, you know, and, and I think that knowing things, knowing that things have a purpose, or knowing that you've got a good training plan, or that you have a good coach that's putting purpose behind it, it to me makes you even more engaged in the workout. You know, it's it's kind of like, are you a person that wants to be? If you're in school, when you get when somebody gives you busy work, you don't give a shit. You're just like, eh, it doesn't matter. I'm just kind of doing this worksheet just because a substitute teacher doesn't want to have to, you know, um, regu- regulate and monitor the class. Versus your favorite teacher comes in and gives you and says, hey, you know, we're going to do this and this is why we're doing it. This is how we're going to do it. And this is what you're going to get from it. What do you do? You pay attention. Mm-hmm. You work hard. You make sure it's done right because you know that it's just another stepping stone to where you want to go. And listen, man, we're here. <laughs> we are. It is here. This is like I was looking through our team's calendar here, uh, doing these videos and looking up. And like this is like the first weekend. And I mean, it was about two months where I didn't have a lot of people racing. I think the last one of the last bigger races was, I think, November, December with Cozumel and another Western Australia race. But got. Uh, Stephen Edwards doing Ironman New Zealand. You know, by the time he listens to this, it'll be tomorrow. Um, and then a lot of marathons and half marathons. You know, this weekend some sprint tries. I mean, it's 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 here. It, we're back. You know, it's like we, it feels like just yesterday we were talking about working hard for the off season. So I hope you hopped on that train um, because if you didn't, you're going to be in the caboose while the rest of us are in the. Uh, up front with the locomotive um because we're here we're here man i'm a little excited about it if you can't tell yeah i can tell man you're revved up man it's just like it's just exciting to think about and you know people racing and it's like and then you look in like oh there's there's no break from here on out it's it's athletes racing every weekend half marathon sprint tries and it's like we're here you know it's full on um full on you know it's march 1st we can say that next month is camp you know and it's just it's awesome it's just exciting and i'm just i'm super uh, i'm super pumped just to see not only our athletes but everybody who's been listening to the podcast you know and and hopefully taking some some good nuggets here and there to like see everybody get out there and like finally like see the and reap the benefits of all the quiet work you know that was something that we said you know, I think back in October, November, December, it was like, if you want to make a lot of noise now or in, in 2018, do the quiet work right now to make a lot of noise later. And it's time to start. It's time to start making some noise. Time to get that megaphone out. Time to get that blowhorn out and get ready to uh, dust off your outdoor gear and race and have fun and let it rip uh and and so to everyone else who's got a big race or that's dusting dusting their uh their race gear off and getting packed up and getting ready to go you know good luck to you uh and uh i feel like we should like pop a pop a bottle or something of champagne for the for the beginning of tri season yeah um, let's just real Spark quickly, because I know that there's probably a lot of people listening who haven't been, you know, particularly grinding it out, you know, months ago, and mm-hmm. maybe feel a little bit behind the eight ball. And you have a good thing that I always um, appreciated is like, it's always, so now, now is not the time to like, really try and, you know, get crazy with yourself. If you got a race coming up or whatever, you don't feel like you've been keeping up or whatever but you always say that um and correct me if if this is not your philosophy anymore but um that it's better to go into a race um 100 percent under train or no whatever like way under trained than it is to go in you know 10 percent over trained or just can you kind of riff on that a little bit because i, yeah, I think as you're better. building it's, up to go yeah, to a race now it's don't try to make up for all that lost ground it's better to kind of just feel good and, and build up your body to a point where maybe that particular day, that's your biggest workout of the year, of course, um, and just be in solid health and physical shape more than overburdened. Yeah, it's uh, it's better to go into a race 
uh, 1% or excuse me, it's better to go into a race 100% undertrained than even 1% overtrained. Um, and there's even there's a there's a, a good quote I love from Sebastian Keenley who's you know kind of okay at triathlon and I think he said something like if you're totally if you're totally 100% confident you can do uh, the distance in your race then you're probably overtrained mm. um, because you've you've just done too much you know you should always have like j- even the pros you should have that just that little bit of you know, not doubt, but because you're so fresh, you know, and, and I think that I even was telling somebody that this morning, it was like, listen, like there's, there's something to be said with kind of a freedom of, you know, life has been really hard. I've, you know, a lot of people, like, I just know it's been like an epidemic almost of like people getting the flu and like just getting hit so hard um, you know, with like, with was just being sick, you know, like, you know, winter and like, I know a lot of athletes have had like work and job fluctuations and life. Like it's just normal shit. <laughs> you know, it's like, we don't want it to be there, but we get sick. We change jobs. We don't like the job we have. Things at home are difficult. Our kids are super sick. Like, but there's just, there's a certain kind of freedom that comes with things not going perfectly to where you can just tow the start line <clears throat> and almost to the point where like you haven't you haven't trained so consistent so you haven't really earned not earned but you haven't collected enough information to even give yourself an expectation that's like the best way to rock sometimes mm-hmm. is to tow the line with zero expectations a smile and just that attitude of, I have literally no idea how today is going to go, <laughs> but I'm going to have fun, and I'm going to give it hell. And then let's just see what happens. You know, there's there's just a certain kind of freedom that comes with that. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a very, I don't know, it's just a very cool feeling, I think. I've been there a few times, and, and sometimes I've had my best races, you know, where you just like... You you're you're some you sometimes you race smarter than you would, having had enough data. You're just kind of like naive, you know. It's just it's kind of like, you know, the the 14th seed in, the, in March Madness. You know, they've never been on the. And they get to the Elite Eight. They're like they just never been here before. They don't know what they don't know, and they're just out there having fun and giving it hell. Mm-hmm. And those are sometimes the teams that you just like don't even want to like come across. You know, and so if you're out there and you've and you haven't, um, you know, hit it as hard as you would have wanted to, or things have happened, and you're already looking at a race of the year where you have these expectations of PRing and and doing this, I'm like, just come out and let it rip, have fun, like, you know, it's we have always have these like ridiculous expectations we put on ourselves no matter what, so. Even when things work out perfectly, we have these expectations, and then somehow when life works out like as imp- as imperfectly as possible, somehow we still can't like let go of those expectations, <laughs> and so we feel like we should still have it. Mm-hmm. Um, just get out there, have fun, let it rip, and see what happens. And I think it, oftentimes I think you surprise yourself. You know, with, there's just there's some there's a certain something with racing free and and feeling good and just not knowing or not having an expectation and just and just enjoy yourself and have fun and and above all else you know have fun and and set yourself up for you know a great rest of the year yeah that's a really good point man i think sometimes because you there's been occasionally i've like had been sick going into a race and i've ended up having a really good race because then Mm -hmm. you know you just sort of like well just got to do what i got to do and then you don't overdo it and you work on patience and just kind of like executing as best you can. And that re- usually pans out pretty well, it can, depending on the sickness, of course. Yeah. But yep. uh, anyway, I think that's a great way to end it, man. Just give it hell. Have fun and give it hell. Have fun and give it hell, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything else? Uh, once again, uh, uh, please that's awesome. leave us no, iTunes it. review, uh, cr- Crushing Iron Coaching. Is available. We have uh, 
videos and pricing and all that sort of stuff at crushingiron.com crushingiron.com <laughs> camp we have crushing camps. iron crushing iron dot woke dot woke woke iron <laughs> um yeah all that stuff's at crushingiron.com we have a uh, subscribe to our youtube channel leave us some likes there you know it's like god how much do we have to do with that but it just sort of helps us um uh, those are the algorithms, man. It helps us get the word around. Mm-hmm. And um, it's like, if you remotely like like anything that you see that we do, just kind of give it the thumbs up or whatever because those little things help. And uh, I know it's like, I get in those same grooves like, oh, man, I just have to like like everything in the world. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in fact, you do. YOLO. YOLO. You like things once. Yep, that's it. Um, right, any other announcements or uh, anything? We don't. Um, I, tr- I trimmed my beard. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's it's like the in case you know, like I know I haven't done a Facebook Live Q and A in a while. I want to get back to that, but the beard was getting incredibly long. So uh, hey, it was. T- yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, people kind of use, like, the groundhog for, like, when spring is going to be here, but I have decided that when I've trimmed the, the winter beard, spring is here. Uh, um, and got a haircut, got things tightened up a little bit. You know, I could say it's for spring, but to be 100% honest, Allie and I have a date night tomorrow night, uh, childless. Woo. And it will be... <laughs> <laughs> wow! <Bounchy. laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll also be our first night without Hayden. So Hayden is gonna uh, attempt to stay with our uh, her his aunt Jay, uh, Allie's sister, tomorrow night. So uh, I've been tr- I've traveled a few times and I've been without him. Uh, but it'll be our her first. Uh, night without him since he was born and our collective first night with neither one of us being them so uh but hey uh on the bonus she also lives in our neighborhood so if if uh, we need to come get him be happy to come get him but it uh it'll be fun we'll have a good time i'm gonna go out to fifth and taylor and get some good food um probably take a few you know a couple angle shots of my food so i can uh, snapchat and instagram it and yolo it and uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Hashtag foodie. Hashtag Nashville. Dude, that is <laughs> righteous. It is. <laughs> ah, there's a good one. I like that. Right, yeah. Yeah, sick. Uh, sick. But yeah, man, that's it. I'll uh, I'll be at the lab tomorrow too. If you want to come out and join me for a little bit. Um, but yeah, man, that's it. I may do that. All right, I'll hit you up. I'll let you know. Have a good weekend, everyone. Race well. Have fun. Give it hell. And uh, we'll see you Monday. All right. That ends the Crushing Iron podcast for today. We love you. Thanks for listening. Yeah, most of you. See you. Bye.